There was a new O level called computing science and nobody knew what computer science was. So the maths teacher put a piece of code up on the board and he told the class to change it to do something completely different. And within seconds I was lucky enough to be able to do it and that was it, I was hooked. I'm Julie McCann, I'm a professor at Imperial College, the Department of Computing. I'm curious about future computer systems and how they're able to adapt to their environments. My approach is to be inspired by biology and nature and the tricks that those systems do and bring that into computer systems. There's a number of trends that are happening in technology at the moment. Sensors are shrinking in size. At the same time, we can do a lot with uh, wireless communications. And all this is coming together to build these tiny systems that can play a massive role in cities. We're miniaturising these systems further and further and what we have at the moment are systems that would be around matchbox size. They can be miniaturised in the near future to around the size of a penny but the aim is ultimately to bring these down to the size of dust. So imagine our near future where we've got these sensors implanted in the environment. We've got a problem ahead of us. If they start to communicate with each other we're bound to hit a boundary quite soon. And we know this is the Shannon capacity. This is the uppermost capacity for a given space that one can communicate wirelessly in. This has implications for industry in the sense that you hit that boundary, basically the communication systems fail. So this is where our research comes in. A lot of the work that we do is borrowed from nature in the sense it's bio-inspired bees and creatures like ants and creatures that swarm and have hives have the ability to not have much processing power individually but they form an intelligent network. We're building these tiny little devices and these little devices consist of sensing uh, capabilities. They also have processing power and they're able to communicate with each other wirelessly. In sensor networks we communicate via multi-hop that is the Communication sends the data across the network, hopping across the devices in that network. That means more systems can speak at the same time, which means we don't have to worry so much about the Shannon capacity problem. Taking the trend of multi-hop further, in the next five years, I can imagine in city environments, your mobile phone being used to relay data across the city itself. So the data will be hopping through your phone and you won't even notice it. That means that your phone can actually be a means of making money for you. What I imagine that this will take in the, in the next 10 years time is that we will not necessarily communicate all the data back to some sort of central area. What we'll do is process out on the edge. Now that means that we'll start to push the processing out to these small devices. If we go out to beyond 20 years, we can imagine with miniaturization and the advances in nanotechnology that we can bring these systems down to dust. And if we bring them down to dust, we can get them to monitor environments, but we can also get them to collaborate to form maybe even solid objects to help our environment. I imagine our notion of the cloud will be completely changed. It will no longer consist of single big computing systems. It will be much more distributed and very much decentralised. So the future is small, low cost and low powered. <laughs>